Well, hello again, fellow YouTubers. I'm back one more time with my project car, the 99 Honda Accord EX two-door coupe with the V6 engine, a lot of engine, small car. And again, it's my project car. I've been working on this to fix it up for my 16-year-old daughter. I've already done a video or two on this car. Well, discovered another issue that I had here a few weeks ago. Actually, I discovered two issues. In the process of looking for one issue, I found a second issue. Uh, the first issue was that uh, I hadn't checked my coolant level in quite some time. I decided it was about time to check it. Well, it was low. Somewhat low. I believe about uh, two quarts low. So I didn't see any obvious areas where the coolant was coming from. And I suspected the uh, head gasket. So I went through, I have a block tester that I got from Napa, handy little device. I checked to see if there were any fumes in the coolant, because you know you want to lower the level of the coolant and put the block tester in there, put in the fluid and check it. If it turns yellow or green, then you have exhaust gases in your coolant. Well, it stayed blue. I made sure that I had fresh fluid. Actually, my neighbor helped me out there. I had loaned it to him. The fluid is a little bit old and he bought some new fluid. So I double checked that. It came out fine. I didn't see any obvious areas where the coolant had been hitting the ground. I looked for anything that was coming out of the water pump, maybe out of the weep holes, nothing. I looked for leaks from the upper and lower radiator hose. I reached down in there and double checked, nothing. I checked the radiator and initially didn't see anything. But I did see a spot on the condenser, thinking it was possibly a pinhole leak that was shooting out the front of the radiator and going through the condenser. Well, I was able to disprove that theory because the radiators in back, the condenser for the ACs in front, I put a piece of cardboard in there, there was no leakage. So that then brought me on to a second problem, which was the condenser had a leak. Now last summer, back in July, we had discovered that the AC wasn't cooling quite as effectively. Took it to my mechanic, found out we were a little bit low on the Freon maybe a pound or so. So he filled it back up, he put in the can of dye, and we waited. Well, about the same time I was checking on the radiator, I discovered this uh, wet spot on the front of the condenser, which made me think the radiator was leaking forward. Well, when I put my hand on that, it was oily. Uh-oh, there's another problem. So I've got the special glasses and the small light to look for the UV dye it didn't show it. That's what surprises me. If I went up, up to the low pressure cap, then I could see the dye where he'd added it, but it didn't show in this oil. Now I've got a couple of photographs I'm going to include with this to show you what I'm talking about. It's, it's kind of a visual thing. So now I've got two problems. One was the radiator and one was the air conditioning condenser. So I decided I'll just go ahead and, and replace both of these. I'm also going to replace the upper and lower radiator hose. Now I'm going to reverse engineer this a little bit simply because uh, I've already taken the radiator and the condenser out. So I'm going to show you exactly what I did. It's, it's not a really hard job. Um, fairly simple, but you got to have the right tools. Now somebody's probably thinking, hey, did you discharge the R134A into the atmosphere? Well, no, actually. It eventually leaked out through that leak in the condenser. Uh, I'm going to show you where the radiator leaked. It actually had a leak. And the reason I couldn't see it on the ground is it was leaking into the splash shield, but on the top. Now the splash shield is somewhat cupped. So when it would leak out, and as a matter of fact, the week before I decided to do this, I lost an entire pint. And I kept looking. I even looked under the uh, coolant passage. Couldn't find it. I just happened to be looking with my flashlight and I found it, and again I'll have the picture included, I found it on top of the splash shield. So what was happening is as I drove away it would disperse it 
That was the other reason I could drive away and I'd be looking in the rearview mirror and never saw a puddle. So it was one of those situations that was driving me crazy, but I did find the answer. Now, like anything, I've put this car up on jack stands. Uh, safety, safety, safety. I don't take responsibility for anything that you might do. If you don't really think about it, always safety. I've got my car jack sump under here. You never leave a car up on just a jack itself. I have uh, jack stands, I should say, more clearly. I have jack stands under the car. But the jack itself, you know, the seals could rupture and the car could come down on you, and obviously that would be a disaster. But let me show you what I've done to this point. Now, as you approach the car, if you look, you'll see a lot of white residue on the car. Well, that's where the radiator uh, had exploded prior to my purchasing this car. And so when it did, it shot the coolant and the water and the residue all over. Let's see if I can get a good close shot there. See, all kinds of white residue. Now, again, the areas that I looked at, I looked over here by the water pump, and what I saw by the water pump, and that's very difficult to see with a camera, but it glistens a little bit. Let's see if I can focus it a little bit. It glistens, but that's more oil, not really coolant, and the weep holes are on the bottom. So again, I was looking over here, and you can see more of the coolant. And I'm looking over here, and you see a little bit of oil down there. And I looked over here, and what I don't have is the radiator in here, and on the back side of the radiator are the two cooling fans. you got the cooling fan and the condenser fan. Well, it wasn't until that one evening that I actually saw the pool of coolant down right there. You can see my toe. That's where the splash shield would be, back in here and a little bit further back there. The splash shield right there where my toe is, it was capturing all that. And I just happened to see it when I had this particular flashlight on. Well, I said, okay, that's where it's coming from. Now, the passage, here's like the EGR valve. The passage, coolant passage under here, and then right there that you're looking at where the upper radiator heater, excuse me, upper radiator hose goes, and that's right there. And here's where the lower radiator, um, excuse me, that's where the lower radiator hose goes, and that's where the thermostat is. I thought, well, maybe, you know, the, the T-stat was leaking. Nope, nope wasn't that it wasn't the passage again that's when I looked hard and of course I found the coolant now when I reached down here to check and see if that particular hose that lower radiator hose were leaking make sure that your battery is disconnected those little fans are thermostatic and you get your hand caught in there it's going to put a powerful hurt on you so what I did is I disconnected my battery like I always do and reached down in there and found out it was not the hoses. And that's when I saw the pool of coolant. Moment of discovery. All right, now, the radiator again sits in the back. So there are a couple of clamps here and right in here that hold it in place. And then at the bottom, right there, are these rubber bushings that kind of cushion the ride, so to speak. One of the bushings was missing. And I found this in its place. Now, the rubber bushing, the original, is there. And I bought a new one since the other one's missing. But the problem is, this one's a little bit taller than the one on the right, which is the original. Let me turn it over. Well, actually, let me bend down a little bit here, and that'll be easier. You can see. There's a slight difference of about a half an inch in height. I ordered the correct part, so things must have changed. Now, I'm not sure I want it kind of catawumpy, so I'm going to go ahead and get a second one to make sure it's that size. Radiator cap. I already have the original radiator cap, and I've learned, too, there are two different styles of radiators that will actually fit Hondas. There's a uh, Denso-type and another type, and the radiator caps are actually two different sizes. So I just checked, and this one does fit my new radiator. It also 
You see that number right there? 1.1 atmospheres, or about 16 pounds. And I just checked on the radiator, it does fit. So, oh, let me show you the old parts versus the new parts. I'm going to show you where this leak in the radiator was. All right, here's the original radiator. Now, um, this is if I'm in the driver's seat facing forward. So here's the lower radiator hose. The two brass connections down here, that is for the transmission cooler because the lower aspect of this is going to have transmission fluid running through it and to keep it cool. Another thing that I noticed is you can adjust these nipples. Oops, things over. You can adjust these. Maybe it wasn't that one. So that you can you can rotate it. Well, I can't get it off my fingers now. You can rotate this until you get it to the right aspect to put your hose back on. You can unscrew that a little bit. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. And it was not tightened all the way, so therefore this kind of spun around. Now, if you don't tighten it, you could lose the transmission fluid slowly, but you could lose transmission fluid. Well, I was lucky, and I didn't lose any fluid. I will also show you those two hoses in a second that connect to this. All right, again, you can kind of see some of the coolant on here. All right. So, here and here, since you're facing the back side, that's where the two cooling fans went. So if you put this in proper order, as if I were facing the front of the car, what you'll have is in front of the radiator, and in front of this is going to be the condenser, which is still in the car. And here is going to be one fan, and here's going to be the other fan. That coolant pool was down here. What I couldn't see was the leak was coming from down here. Now this is not obvious at the moment, but I'm going to show you the picture. When I first took it out, that was where the leak was for the radiator. You just couldn't see it because of the fan shroud. Once I pulled it out, that's when you saw it. Now again, this sits in the car. There's your pet cock. Of course, you have to drain all the fluid to do this job. There's the pet cock, emptied all the fluid, took these lines off. It's a messy job, got a little bit of uh, transmission fluid on me, but I'm also going to do go ahead and change the transmission fluid. That'll be another video. And then I was able to slide this out, took the upper radiator, uh, upper radiator hose and the lower radiator hose off. There are a couple of electrical connections on the actual fans, I'll show you that, that you take apart. And you can't mix the fans up because of the bolt pattern. And there's like several bolts that keep this on the back of the radiator. So here's one of the electrical connections, and then there's another. And you can't, like I say, you can't mix these fans up because they only bolt in a certain direction. And those uh, connections, those electrical connections, are on top. All right, now I was telling you about the hoses for the transmission fluid. Well, I've pushed them out of the way, but there's one, and the other one I pushed kind of like, you see it right there? It goes under the battery case. I just pushed it out of the way, so it will connect to those two brass connections. Now here is your condenser. Now I'm going to pull it out next. Now why have I waited? To remove this condenser. Well, you don't want to subject these things to atmospheric pressure for long periods of time. What you want to do is disconnect it and put the new one on. These things uh, don't like moisture and don't like the atmospheric pressure, so I'm waiting until the last minute. Now there are two connections. You got to be careful with this because again it's connected to the AC system and these tubings can be rather delicate. 
and you've got to make sure because it goes from here to the dryer and you can see some of those tubings in there they're small and delicate so I have to go through the top here for one let's see if I can get a good shot yeah there's see there's a bolt in here. here we go this is better see there's the one bolt and then underneath right here is another bolt now you have to remove those and there are going to be some o-rings in there so when you put this mat together you have to make sure that you wet those o-rings with the oil that comes in the system I'm not going to buy a can. I'm going to use some of the oil that's still left in the condenser. I'm going to use that oil, wet those our rings, put it back together, tighten it down. You know, I don't know what the tech uh, or what the actual uh, torque would be, but you don't want to do it too firmly. This is all aluminum stuff. And again, it has bumpers. This also has a couple of little um, support brackets that fit in and keep this thing from moving up and down and back and forth. So it's nothing more than a few 10 millimeter head bolts to take all this stuff off. It's not real complicated. The Splash Shield has a bunch of those plastic pins, you know, which they always break. But uh, I've been able to get some new ones. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, oh, hold on. Let me show you the new stuff. As you can see, here's that residue again, all on the Splash Shield. You look at the bottom of the Splash Shield. That was a regular mess. So. I now have a new radiator. I went ahead and got the Denso type, which is like OEM. The original in this car was a Showa. But I figured, hey, for the price, I'll go with the Denso. So again, I'm looking as if I'm the driver. So here's your lower radiator hose port down at the bottom. Here are the two connectors for the transmission fluid cooler. There's the upper radiator hose, and of course the filler cap, and then the connection that goes from the filler cap over to the overflow. There we go. Alright. I then got a new Denso condenser. It came with its rubber grommets. Now I'm looking forward, because here's the upper connector and there's the lower connector now the little gray caps are in there to keep atmospheric pressure out of there you, again uh, moisture can damage these things with dirt and grit so it's slightly pressurized now uh, oh I also got uh, an upper and lower radiator hose. Went ahead and got those. Just, you know, they hadn't been replaced. If I'm doing this job, I do it right. So I'll give you a parts list here. Now I got some of this stuff from Majestic Honda. When it comes to the OEM stuff, I go through Majestic Honda in uh, Rhode Island. And uh, the radiator and the condenser I got from Rock Auto. Now the radiator and condenser, uh, I think we're like $50 a piece plus shipping. Now, I got the hoses, O-rings are a couple of bucks each. The lower radiator hose was like $16.53, and the uh, upper one was $14.02. Uh, $14.02. The cushion, gosh, even discount price was 10 bucks. So again, I've got to order another cushion. Oh yeah, and because this is a special job, you've got to have a supervisor. And uh, you know, my dog rats on me. She tells my wife whether or not I'm doing the job and whether or not I'm doing the job properly. But when I want to goof off, I give her a Scooby snack. And then of course, she'll tell my wife anything I want her to say. So again, here's, here's the supervisor. Look up, pup. Okay, here's the condenser. Now, there's the spot I was talking about. If I were facing the car, this was to the right and facing front. 
and it actually started back it up a little it would actually start about here and run its way down again to make sure that, that wasn't coolant this was in front I uh, put a piece of cardboard back here between the two the radiator and a condenser and didn't get anything and then I did that and wow like I say all kinds of oil as a matter of fact there was still a little residual pressure in this system not much but enough that it uh, he let me know that there was pressure there and you can see there's the top connection with the old o-ring and looking down here right there is the lower connection that has a smaller o-ring so that one's smaller that one's larger now I'm going to remove those and I've had like I said I took some of this residual oil that shot out and I put that on the o-rings you don't want to tear the o-rings and I'm going to put things back together Okay, on the left are the two old or original O-rings. On the right are the new ones. Now, very subtle variation. The ones on the left have been in there for some time, therefore they're a bit uh, flat. And if you look, the smaller O-ring looks a little bit larger than the new one. It's, really, again, really hard to tell. It's subtle when it comes to doing this with a camera but you see some slight variations. So again, I've oiled up the original, I'm sorry, I've oiled up the new ones, and I'm going to put those new ones in. Okay, the new O-rings are now on. Now, I was talking about the tubing, see that tubing right there, up and down that tubing. Be very careful, that goes over to the dryer. Don't snap it off for another piece that you're gonna have to buy. There's the other one, right there. Make sure they're nice and moist with that, I think it's called PAG, P-A-G oil. And I'm going to very gently push those into the receptacle on the condenser. You don't force anything, just very gently push it in. So that's coming up next. All right, here are the two bolts that hold that in. I went ahead and took them over to the bench grinder. I've got the wire wheel. Polished them up a little bit. There was some of that galding. So uh, I'm going to very carefully put those in. Hand tighten first. Then tighten up with your 10 millimeter socket. And don't over tighten. Okay, so here's the brace that actually fits over the grommet on the top and bottom of the condenser. So, the grommet will go there. This will face forward. You know, that's a little bit of a wing there. That will face forward, and there's where the screw goes. Or the bolt, I should say. And you can see it. I did it on the right side here. Here's, that's where the little wing is right there, and there's the bolt. Now, those rubber grommets, you can push up and down. And so, they're mashed on there pretty tightly. So in order to keep things in place, there's the one grommet. Here's the other grommet. I had to push them up and down to kind of center this so that everything would stay in its respective spot. So I did it on this side. I'm going to do it on the other side. Well, here we are. There is, this is the passenger side here. There's that washer slash grommet. Here's that one at the top. It didn't require as much adjustment. There's the bolt. And again back to the driver side. There's the bolt. And the washer, top washer, the bottom washer, grommet, rubber grommet. Everything centered. Here is the upper connection there, right there. That's the AC compressor connection and then if you look through the bumper here you will see the second connection let me see if I can get this camera down a little bit pardon the shakiness there it is so again I tightened those firm let the o-rings do their job don't tear them up and now this system is ready to be repressurized but I still have to put the radiator back in 
So that's coming next. I'm going to wipe down some of this oil here just so it doesn't attract dirt. Oh, here's some advice too. I forgot to mention this. It's a radiator. It has fins. Try not to mash the fins. When you do that, that decreases the efficiency. Now you can't help road hazards, but when you're putting this back in, be gentle. Remember, this stuff is aluminum and it strips very easily. So be very careful when you uh, put these in so that you don't mash the fins. It just reduces the efficiency. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start putting the fans back on. Remember uh, I said that you can't really mix them up? All right, so again, you're looking as if you're in the driver's seat looking forward. This is going to be on the driver's side. And if you notice, here and here, there are some pegs that slip into these holders on the actual radiator. Here is the coolant chamber. Then again, there's two bolts up here. This bolt hole, this bolt hole, actually right there is where the coolant line is mounted to, and one of the tubes will go up here. That was missing two of its bolts. That was probably what the rattle was that I heard for a long time. But the coolant line fastens there, and again, it was just sitting there just above the splash shield. Here's the lower radiator hose. So I'm going to go ahead and put the 10 millimeter bolts in up here to secure. There's two of them up there. All right, here's the second fan. And again, down here, it's more of a tongue that fits on top of a small bracket. One bolt, then two bolts up here. So again, you can't get it upside down or back asswards or ass backwards. It's pretty simple. And you know the connectors are on top. Those are your electrical connectors. So I'll tighten these down. Most of these have lock washers on them or special washers. So you don't need to tighten them too tight. As the old saying goes, torque it down until it strips and back it off a couple turns. New no, does not apply in this case. This uh, plastic, especially when it gets old, but since it's a new radiator, it doesn't really count. But when it gets old, it gets very, very brittle. And these Hondas have been known to have cracks on these radiators up in this area. Um, it actually happened to me when I had an 89 Accord. Got all the way down to Emory to go to school, and it cracked on me somewhere in South Carolina, and my air conditioning decreased. Found out the next day I'd been leaking coolant somewhere on Interstate 85, down in South Carolina all the way to Atlanta. So uh, again, I'm going to tighten those up till they're firm. Okay, so I've decided to go ahead and put the radiator back in. I really didn't care about those grommets because uh, by the time it's all said and done, these clamps, which are on top and a grommet there and over here, are going to hold things together and it's going to even it out anyway. I just happened to call the dealership and that little rubber bumper that holds this together down underneath, cushions it, is $20. I uh, had gotten the one that was missing online from Majestic Honda for like 10, including my order with the hoses and the like. So I just went ahead and put the clamps on to heck with it. I mean, it doesn't look that uneven to begin with. It keeps it nice and level. So I, was, I don't want to say I'm cheap, but it just wasn't worth it. I mean, I put good money and good parts in, but it just wasn't worth it. So I've tightened this down. I cleaned up those bolts also. They were a little on the rusty side. And now I'll start working underneath on the hoses, putting all the hoses together. As you can see, I've got the fans back on. I'll make the electrical connections. There we go. Oh, as I was putting this in, I noticed something a little on the odd side. This is a Japanese car. And uh, Japanese part, Denso. Denso is like OEM. There's also NGK. But if you look at that little sticker, made in Taiwan. Hmm, got to talk to some of my Japanese friends. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, used to live in Japan back in the 70s. Went to high school there. And uh, I find that kind of odd. Made in Taiwan. Here's something else. I'm going to go ahead and start putting the radiator hoses back on. This will be the lower radiator hose. I'm going to go ahead and use these same clamps. These are like these pressure type clamps. 
I think they're good enough. Traditionally, you go ahead and replace them as a safety measure, but I think these are still pretty good. Uh, a little trick that I found, too. I went to AutoZone, and I get this stuff. The radiator hose grease. Man, this works great. When you're trying to get these uh, hoses back on, you smear a little bit of that on there, slides right on. And at a later date, if it's not been years and years, slides right off. Man, it makes your life so much easier. Yeah, it's like $1.49 a pack. So I smear it all on the inside of the radiator hose and a little bit on the plastic fitting of the radiator. Now, if you do go and get the new clamps and you use the ones that you have to tighten, uh, either with the screwdriver or the socket, be careful when you tighten them. Don't over-tighten them. Remember that this radiator is plastic and aluminum. You'll crack the plastic, even if it's new. So tighten it just enough to prevent leaks. When you crank the car up after you refill it with the coolant, you're going to be checking for leaks anyway. Okay, here we are. Oh, back under the car on my back. And I have put the lower radiator hose on. Let's see if we can get a good focus there. There we go. Now, you might be asking, why didn't I put that on first and then slide the radiator in? Well, I took it out that way, but I decided to go ahead and um, do it this way because trying to get this in by myself, it's a one-man job, was a little difficult. It was easier for me to go ahead and put the radiator in and then slip this on. Again, I used that radiator grease, slid right on. Now, I'm going to attach the lines that uh, go to the transmission cooler. Because I had to take, you know, that had to be a part before I could put this on. So, in reverse order. Okay, I stand corrected there. Let's see. This was the line to the cooler right there. And goes right down there. That fastens on this side. So, before I put the cooler line on that goes to the opposite side over here, that one has the bracket. This one does not, so I have to run it here. There's a little clip right there that holds it in place behind the lower radiator hose and then onto that nipple. You can't see it. I'm going to climb underneath and show you. But I went ahead and ran this one first, then I'm going to put the bracket on. Okay, here we go. Now, there's the lower radiator hose and there's the first nipple of the transmission cooler, and there is the clamp. So now, around it here, here's where that clamp's going to be for the second line. I'm going to put that on next. Still underneath the car. So, there's the bracket, the first bracket. That's like a 10 millimeter bolt, 10 millimeter head bolt. It's up in here, it's hard to see. Runs across, there's another bracket right there another 10 millimeter bolt that runs across on, up on my head again and then there's the nipple there now this one because the nipple was pointed upwards i had to loosen up the nut and it spins freely the nipples spin freely it's a 22 millimeter wrench so i Lefty loosey, righty tighty, right there. I loosened that up just enough that I could turn the nipple, and I was able to turn the nipple a little more to the left so that I could get the uh, proper positioning on those clamps. And I've got to pull this clamp down there to seal it. So, so there we go. Clamps on. Double check all my work. And I need to put the other radiator hose on. Oh, I want to show you something up top also. If you look there where the thermostat is, get around the hose there. There we go. Whoop, they want the radiator cap. All right, there's an awful lot of junk on there I'm going to scrape off. Because otherwise, that's going to be a leak. But I'll go ahead and scrape that off. It's just crusty stuff. Okay, so I've gotten the uh, lower radiator hose attached to the thermostat. Nice and pretty. Use a little bit of the hose grease after I got that all cleaned up. Put the, put the clamp back on. You'll see there's a connector there. I'm going to use my 
dielectric gel and put that in there. I'm a firm believer in using dielectric gel wherever I can, especially on outside components. Put that one on pretty easily. Here's a tip. When putting on this upper radiator hose, that was a tight fit back there. You can see right there where the hose meets the water passage body. Just remember that the short turn is in the front. If you notice down here it's fairly long. Well if you put that up here then what happens is your hose will turn too late and interfere with the front of the engine and the oil cap. So make sure you make the short turn up toward the radiator. Boy I'm glad I had the radiator grease because that right there was a bit of a tight fit. Now, before I get ready to connect the top hose, I'm going to reconnect the connectors to the fans. You don't want to forget those. So there's one set of connectors that I will connect. Now, see there's a little tab there? That'll fit into a slot right there. That keeps the wiring harness out of the fan. Here's another tab and it will go right there and then you come over and here's the second plug again I'm going to use the um, dielectric grease oh these uh, hoses there's a small plastic clamp hopefully you still have yours that keeps them separated don't forget to connect that and you can see I went ahead and did my electrical connector there okay I'm gonna finish this up for this evening um, Upper radiator hose is on. I then have all the connections. There was a wire down here. It was a little bit too close to the alternator, so I did a little tie wrap on that. But that connection and that connection. I reconnected the overflow tank. And what I'll start doing tomorrow is uh, adding the coolant. Let's see, there's that little clamp I was talking about. Oh, let's take a quick look now that it's darker. I think you can see the leak a little bit better. It started up high, worked its way down. That's facing the car, so that's going to be the driver's side. Yeah, because there are the connections in the front for the left side. So this is the driver's side. Yeah, it was a major leak. Okay, so I'm going to wrap it up for this evening and uh, probably continue tomorrow. Check all my connections and fittings, make sure everything's tight connected properly and then add the coolant and I'm going to show you this nifty little funnel that I bought online. I've been wanting to get one but it makes doing radiator jobs when it comes to flush and fill very very easy. Well I was almost ready to call it a night. I went ahead and filled up the radiator so I'll bleed everything tomorrow but I forgot to reconnect the line, the cable that goes to the cruise control. I had it hang up on the, the hood. Well, it would have been easier had I put it on first and then done the upper radiator hose. So what I had to do is I followed along and went up to here and just disconnected it here. Used a 12 millimeter wrench there, disconnected it, ran it under the hose, reconnected it, snapped everything back in. So again, there's the cable. And it's filled up, and like I say, I've run out of time. I'll uh, mend battery power too. I will go ahead and work on this again tomorrow. I thought I'd bring this back indoors to do the recap. Two problems that I discovered the radiator had a leak, and the condenser had a leak. In the process of finding the condenser leak first, I then found the radiator leak. So it was a relatively simple job, didn't require a lot of tools, and I want to say that the uh, condenser was about $50, the radiator was about $50, got them both from Rock Auto, plus a little shipping. They were uh, OEM Denso. The original condenser was, I believe, Showa, S-H-O-W-A. The radiator had already been replaced once by the person I bought the car from. Why it leaked about a year later, I'm not sure. I have checked and I still do not see any indication of a blown head gasket or increased pressure. I also went ahead and replaced the upper and lower radiator hoses. Since I was there and when I talked to the person I purchased the car from, 
when they replaced the radiator, they did not replace those hoses. So for the relatively low cost, I went ahead and did that. I went ahead and also added coolant. I had done a flush about six months ago, so I didn't feel it necessary to go ahead and replace all the fluid. I then also bought that, I think it's Liesl, L-I-S-L-E, funnel off of eBay that helps you uh, fill radiators. Very nice little item. Uh, it's well worth the money. I do enough radiator flushes that you end up spilling everywhere. So I went ahead and purchased that, and that's something I'll be using forever and ever and ever. I have uh, also at the same time did a drain and fill on this radiator. This is the V6 Accord 99, and the filter is internal. And so all I really had to do was have the car warm enough, say at operating temperature, to go ahead and open the drain. And the drain also has a magnet on it, so it catches any shavings that might come off. Now my fluid is rather dark, it's rather nasty looking, and it was um, really do. The fluid, I always use the Honda OEM, as recommended by most of the Honda people I've talked to, much like the power steering fluid. I went ahead and purchased that on eBay, and I believe the capacity is about 3.1 quarts, so I got 6 quarts. Well, that's double, but what I'm going to do is a drain and fill times 2, so I'll be doing kind of my own flush. Now, again, I heated up the uh, engine to operating temperature. Be careful, it's hot. Undid the plug, drained it, undid the plug on top, the fill plug on top, filled it back up. I will then drive it for a day or so, keep it operating temperature, put it back up on the jack stands, drain it again, add another three quarts, check the level. So that's uh, how the DIYer can actually do a drain and fill on this car. Now, as I understand it, my wife is now wanting me to mow the lawn and clean the garage. I think I'm going to jet. Like I said when I was inside, the wife is looking for me. She wants me to mow the lawn and clean the garage. And I feel the need to go into town and get some more auto parts for the car. Maybe even stop at Starbucks.